All right, welcome to Street TV. I'm Alex Alonso. I'm here with another update in the Eric Holder trial. I got a synopsis of testimony for day three, which was the star witness of the case, uh, Bernita Nicholson. She was witness number 10, and she testified for most of the day on day three and into day four. And let's go over what she had to say under direct examination by John McKinney. Uh, she's about 35 years old. She was born in LA but she left LA when she was two years old and she moved out of state. Um, and then at some point later, she came back to LA. She's employed as a, a, a caregiver. She works at homes and at a facility and she's been working for an agency for 10 years and she does transportation. She picks up customers working for Lyft. Uh, she, was in she was living in Long Beach for about one year when the incident on March 31st, 2019 happened. And prior to that, she had been living in Bellflower. She had moved, lived in Bellflower from about 2008 to 2018. And then after that, she moved to Long Beach. John McKinney asked her, are you a gang member? And she replied, no. Do you associate with gang members? She said, no. And how familiar are you with L.A.? And she said she used to live in L.A. by the Magic Johnson Theater on Martin Luther King Boulevard, which is in the area of Crenshaw and King. And she said, and he asked her, how old were you when you lived in, in that area in L.A.? And she said she was in her 20s. Maybe she was 24 years old at that time. Oh, she was asked if she had any siblings, and she said, no, she's an only child. and that she had lived with her mom in LA, Bellflower, and Long Beach. So basically, um, but at the, at the time of the incident in 2019, she had just found a new place in Long Beach and was getting ready to move in there. So basically she has been living with her mom all the way up until she was 35. Um, oh, well, she, she was 35 when she testified in court just recently, so in 2019, she would have been 32. So she's been living with her mom most of her life, and she had just found an apartment at that time in 2019. She was asked, do you know the defendant? And she said yes. And uh, she, they, uh, they asked her by what name. She said Eric. And how did you meet? Eric and she said she had picked him up at Seal Beach during a lift and dropped him off in Long Beach. That was on February 25th, 2019. Did you have a conversation with with Eric? She said, "Yes. We talked, exchanged information. I gave him my phone number." During the ride, did you want to see him again? And she said, "Yes. When you were dropping him off, did you recognize the area in Long Beach?" Yes, it was right next to the area I was about to move to. So that's an interesting coincidence. Right where she was getting her new apartment was pretty much the same area where Eric Holder lived in Long Beach. So you can imagine they, they probably hit it off. Um, did you start a friendship with him? Yes. How, did you describe, how would you describe how he was towards you in the relationship? She described it like a homeboy. What is a homeboy? Well, we were just hanging out. We had no title, just trying to get to know each other. Was it a dating relationship? She said no. Then she was asked, what's the difference between a dating relationship and hanging out? And she said we had no title, no commitment. It was whenever. How often did you see each other between February 25th and March 31st of 2019? She said, not every day, but a lot. We went to eat, went to the mall, went to the beach. Uh, were the two of you, would, when the two of you would go around, how would you get around? She said, my car. Who paid for the dates? She said she did. Uh, she mentioned one of the dates was a Red Lobster. Were you interested in him like a boyfriend one day? She said, not really. Were you ever intimate with Eric? And she said, yes but it was one time. And then she talked about meeting his cousin who lived in Long Beach also. 
uh, were your dates in the Long Beach area or were they at other places? And she said there were other places, but mostly in L.A. What about the area that Nipsey Hussle was shot? Have you been there before with Eric? No, not in that, not in that spot, but in the area, she said. How many times were you in the area with Eric? Uh, one time we stopped at a liquor store. Did you ever ask Eric where he was from? She said no, but he said he was from LA. Did you ever tell, did he ever tell you what neighborhood he was from? No. Did you know he was in a gang? She said no, not until after the shooting. And then the prosecutor asked, are you talking about the shooting on March 31st, 2019? Yes. And then they started to talk about what happened on that day. So the way she explains it is she was doing her lift job on March 31st. She was driving in the Disneyland area in Anaheim and Eric had kept calling her and she wasn't answering his call. But at some point she decided to answer the call and he said he wanted to hang out. So she decided to do one last lift trip and then ended early and then she went to go pick Eric up in Long Beach. Then he asked her, what did you do next? Um, right after she got off the phone with Eric, she went and got some gas, she got something to eat and then she went on her way to pick him up. Um, she said that Eric wanted to get in and out and then he said he wanted to go to LA. She said she wanted to go to the Slauson Swap Meet, which is right there on Slauson and Western. And then they talked about that he lived with an uncle. So she picked him up from where she where Eric lived with an uncle. She said she met him several times, but she didn't know what his name was. And he asked, did you ever have a fight with him before? And she said, no. Was he ever physically abusive to you? She said, no. Have you seen him with a gun before? And she said, yes. More than one occasion? Yes. When was the first time you seen him with a gun? The prosecutor asked. Uh, the first time was when we went to his cousin Harold's place where he had a studio at Harold's. Did you see Eric rapping? Yes. Did you know he rapped before that day? No. Did you ask questions? She said no. And then um, the prosecutor, prosecutor asked, did you listen to his music? She said, yes, it was on his phone. Um, after he rapped with Cousin Harold, after he rapped, Cousin Harold actually walked over to him and handed him a gun. She said it was a silver long one. He put gun away by the waistband. That was the first time seeing a gun. Did you ask any questions? She said, yes, I asked, why do you have that? And he said it was for, it was for protection. That was the first time she saw a gun. The second time she saw a gun, uh, she wanted to say it was at his place and it was a revolver that was just sitting on the couch. And that would have been a couple days later. And it had duct tape around the handle, as she remembered. So two different times, he had two different guns. Were you concerned, prosecutor asked. She said, yeah. But he said it was for protection. The third time she saw the semi-automatic black gun. Did you ask any questions? No. Did you, did you see him a lot with that gun? She said, yes, he just carried it with him. He was riding around with a gun in your car? He was asked, he asked her. She said, yes. Were you concerned that the police would pull you over? She said, no. Did you want to be his girlfriend? No, it was a homeboy situation, nothing serious, she said. Why did you spend so much time with him? I don't know, was trying to get to know him, she said. Okay, so back to March 31st, he asked, uh, so how was he dressed when you picked him up? She said he didn't have a shirt on. He had a bandana around his neck. And then he asked, he has tattoos all over. Did you ask about the tattoos? She said, I asked him about the LA tattoo on his neck. Never asked many questions about tattoos. He had God on his arm and a gun on the other. So you guys drove straight to LA? She said, yes. He wanted to stop in the neighborhood close by. How did you get there? He gave me directions to where he wanted me to go. Then he got out the car 
talk to these guys there friendly for about two minutes. From picking him up in Long Beach, did you see a gun? She said no. And then they then she said um, she mentioned let's let's get some food that you said you wanted to get. And then they ended up pulling up at the marathon store on Slauson, which was not too far away from where they had just saw where Eric just saw some friends. So then um, she, prosecutor asked, what happened when you pulled in? She said, she says she saw Nipsey and she was like, oh, there's Nipsey. He looks fine. I want to take a picture with him. What did Eric say? She said nothing. He said nothing. Did you expect to see Nipsey Hustle there? No, just pulled into fine parking and ran into Nip. I parked in the parking lot in the middle. What did you think when you saw Eric Holder standing with Nipsey Hustle? Because when she pulls into the parking lot, he jumps out the car, he walks over to Master Burger, and then a minute after that, he walks over to the group, and then she looks up because she's on her phone. She looks up and she sees Eric Holder standing there with Nipsey Hustle. So the prosecutor asked her, what did you think when you saw him over there? And she said that, that I thought he was trying to beat me to him to get a photo. So I went over there. So if you look at the video, you'll see her exiting the car and walking towards the group. What did you see? She said there were two other guys with Nipsey and Eric. I asked if I can get a photo. One of the guys said, wait a moment after they're finished talking. Eric was talking to Nipsey, talking about snitching. Eric asked Nipsey, did he snitch? Then at that point, Nipsey said he was, <clears throat> excuse me, ready to take the picture. Then I took a photo and I left. Any raised voices? She said no. Now remember, this is all during direct examination under the prosecutor. Now what did you hear Eric say? Did you say, I snitched? Eric was asking Nipsey if he snitched. And then at that point, she said she took a photo and then she walked off and went back to her car. What did you do in the car? Prosecutor asked her. She said she posted the picture of Nipsey to Facebook. Then um, she said she was excited to meet him. And then shortly thereafter, she said that Eric Holder had walked to her car to ask for $2 because he needed money. What actually what happened was, because she may not have been paying attention, after she walked to the car, Eric Holder leaves the group and goes to Master Burger. And then he goes from Master Burger to the car where Bernita's in and asks for $2 because apparently he doesn't have enough money to pay for the chili cheese fries. So then the prosecutor asks, why is it that you're always paying for everything? She says, I don't know. Actually, he paid for half his chili cheese fries. Then you asked him if he was ready to go. Did he want to eat his food? Then he said, drive around. So now he's back in the car with the chili cheese fries and he asked her to just pull out of the parking lot and to drive around. Then, then um, when I drove out of the parking lot, I made a ride on Slauson and went around the Shell gas station and then basically they went all the way back around. And she said once they came back around the block, they pretty much did a circle. He began to put bullets in the gun. She said he was putting bullets and then holding the gun by the window. And she asked, what are you doing? You're not going to shoot out my car. Then he put the gun away on the side and, and she didn't see it again. So she said, we drove and turned on Crenshaw and he still wanted to eat his chili cheese fries. And he told me to pull into the parking lot and he wanted to eat his food. So basically she pulled into the parking lot where Fat Burger's at and then went into the alley and then parked in the alley. Her car was facing south, pointing right towards 58th place. And that's where they sat in the car and he started to eat his chili cheese fries. So um, Eric said, stop here, I want to eat. So she said he ate a couple of bites of the chili cheese fries. And then she said to him, she says, I kept stressing to him, let's go. Then he said, wait right here, I'll be right back. 
he she was asked what was his demeanor was it upset no was it angry no did he curse anyone out no i was just ready to go she says and then he said to her i'll be right back he got out the car with his food and he had actually had a drink as well he got out the he got out the car with his food and drink and he started to walk north through the alley back to where Nipsey Hussle was standing at with the group. She said that she was looking at him and she noticed that he set the food on the hood of a truck that was parked in the alley. Um, and she said she didn't, she didn't see a gun. He got out of the car with the chili cheese fries and did not have a gun. But then she, um, she said, no, but I was on social media so I wasn't paying attention. And then she said within a very short time, probably seconds, she hears shots. She said, I was afraid when I heard the shots and then I saw a man running and I started to pull the, pull the car off into the street. So at that moment, there is some uh, footage from another camera that you see her car pulling forward. And then she was asked, would it, would it have been safer for you to leave? She said, yes. And then she said, Eric returned to the car. She characterized it as a power walk back to the car. And then he asked her, did you see guns in the car? And she said, I just asked what happened. And then he said, you talk too much. I should slap you. He had a stern voice. He said, drive very loud. So I just started to driving and I left. And it was quiet in the car the whole time. He wasn't responding and I didn't want to get him upset, she said. Did you tell the grand jury that you saw him get into the car with two guns? She said, yes, but now you're saying no. And then she responded, I didn't see the guns right away at the moment. Did you see him with a gun when he got back into the car after the shooting? I didn't see a gun. I saw the gun after we drove. I saw a revolver and the automatic. The only thing I asked, what happened? I didn't ask if he used it. Why not? She said it didn't cross my mind. There has to be a reason why you didn't ask, prosecutor asked her. Her response was, I just didn't ask. What happened next? He wanted to get dropped off at Cousin Harold's. I dropped him off. Then I went to my mom's. I stayed at my mom's, washed clothes, watched TV, and laid down. At that point, did you hear that Nipsey Hussle was shot? She said, no. Not until later that night. What did you think when you heard that he was shot? I was just saying, I was just there. I spoke to my mom. And social media posts. Oh, then, then he asked her, what about the social media post that you made with the photo of Nipsey? Did you read the comments? She said, yes, they were posting that Eric did it. Comments said, damn, sis, you were right there. How did you feel? Prosecutor asked her. She said sad because social media was saying Eric did it. I wasn't sure if Eric did it. Then she said that he called, uh, called her on Sunday night and asked, to, asked her to pick him up from Harold's. He asked if he can come over. I told him yes. Then I showed Eric on my phone what they were saying. You shot him. It's on my phone. And then prosecutor asked her, were you afraid of him? She said, no, I brought him to my mom's because I didn't have furniture at my new place and my mom was at work. Did he sleep? What did he do? He went to the balcony, he smoked, and then he went to sleep. Then the next day on Monday morning, I had to go to work and he wanted to get a, a hotel room. And that was the end of day three. That testimony ended at about 3.20 p.m. when the judge excused everyone. And then she was scheduled to continue her testimony on day four. And she continued on direct examination starting at about 9.45 a.m. And the first question that was asked was, what time did you get to the mother's house? She said around 7 or 8 p.m. This has been after she picked up Eric Holder to come back to the mom's house. She said that he went to the balcony, he smoked. I asked him what happened, he ignored me. 
and he went to sleep. The next morning, I asked him if he was ready to go home. He said, I can't go home. My place is a mess. He asked her, um, he asked if he can get a room because his place was dirty. Prosecutor said, have you been to his place before? She said, yes. Was it dirty? She said, yes, it was. So we called around, found a, a Motel 6 in Long Beach. And she let him use the ID to get a room. And then she left. She dropped him off at the Motel 6, helped him get the room. And then she went to her caregiver job. Did you see a gun on that day? She was asked. She said, no. Do you know what happened to the two guns? No, I went to work. Then you saw information on social media that Eric may have done the Nipsey Hustle killing. She said, yes. I went to discuss the shooting with him. I showed him on my phone what people were saying on Instagram. He had no response. So then she said while she was at her mom's, um, at her mom's place, uh, her name, her car came up on the news saw the news that her car, her license plate was on the news. So her mom told her to call the police. It was, it was that, was that the first time you believed that Eric Holder was the shooter from the news report? And she said, my mom called the police and they told her to call back at 6 a.m. when the detectives arrived. So moms and Bernita went to the police, they spoke to a police officer at the front desk, and basically the, the front desk officer uh, told her that don't believe everything you see on the news, and they left. And then moms decided to be persistent about it and called back later at 11 a.m. They went back to the police, and then that's when, when Bernita first met the detectives that were investigating this case. And that's when they interviewed her for five hours. So they went in the morning early, then they went back at 11, and then the investigation of Bernita Nicholson started. Did they tell you your rights? She said, yes. Did you waive your rights? She said, I did. They told me to call Eric Holder while I was at the police station. So during the interrogation with Bernita, she actually calls Eric Holder and, um, they, they were actually trying to set him up, I believe. It said, during the phone call, uh, you spoke to Eric about coming over to the house. She said yes. Apparently, they were going to arrest him that way, but um, for some reason, um, that was the end of the questioning on that topic. And then, um, did you show the detectives the photo you took with Nipsey? She said yes. Did detectives ask you to look into your phone? Yes. They copied your phone? Yes. I consented. Did they search your car? Yes. Did they search your apartment? Yes. Did they search your mother's? Yes. Did you consent? Yes, I did. And then they um, showed an exhibit of an immunity agreement that was signed on June 20th, 2022, which would have been just a few days ago. And it was a one and a half page agreement that states that anything she says cannot be used against her unless she lies or the judge doesn't believe her and then the judge can revoke the agreement. Did you read this agreement? She said, yes, my lawyer did. It's the first time we ever heard that she had a lawyer. At this point, she, for the immunity agreement, uh, and a lawyer was, was a, a lawyer was appointed to her. Um, it says, nothing you say can be used against you as a crime except if you commit perjury or the judge believes you lied. Did you come talk to me, John McKinney was saying. She said, yes. Um, did you tell the police, myself, and the grand jury the truth? She said yes. And um, basically, she, they went through, they played the video of her pulling in and everything that happened, jumping out, which, um, which occurs over the course of about five minutes. And then when she was ready to leave, she asked Eric Holder, are you ready to go? He said, no, I want to eat my food. So she was pulling the car out. Now, this is right after Eric Holder got his chili cheese fries and he got into the car. That's when Bernita said, are you ready to go? And he said, no, 
I want to eat my food. And then that's when they drive around in a circle and he pulls the gun out and she she prevents him from doing the shooting, not physically, but verbally tells her to stop, tells him to stop. And he complies. And then that's when they go park in the alley. And um, that's pretty much the end of direct examination. It went till about 1042 in the morning. And then cross-examination by Jansen started at about 11 a.m. And he went into some topics. He said that um, after Eric got back into the car, at some point later, he was loading a gun. She said, yes. You didn't see that gun prior. She said, no. He was pointing the gun by the clothing store on Slauson. I, she said, yeah. I said, you're not doing a drive-by out in my car. Then he said to park the car in the alley by the fat burger, which he did. And he started eating the fries. And then he said, wait here. I'll be right back. Then you heard gunshots. So he's basically going over some of the same points that the prosecutor brought out of her. Uh, he asked, um, let's see here. Did you feel like you were the getaway driver? She said, no. Um, did Eric Holder get mad when you said Nipsey was fine and you wanted to take a picture? She said no. Um, they played some of the video and it turns out that Bernita was in this conversation or overheard this conversation and was present for it for about 53 seconds. Uh, the entire conversation between Eric and Nipsey lasts approximately four minutes. Uh, she said that um, you were interviewed on April 2nd, 2019 in a recorded interview. And you were also interviewed by John McKinney on April 29th. Then the uh, defense attorney asked her, did you know that that second interview was recorded? And she said no. So they play a clip and the clip says, um, what were they talking about? And this is back in 2019. Now, this is. Bernita's talking in 2019. They're playing a clip and she said there was tension from Nipsey. You can tell he didn't want to talk to Eric. Nipsey looking like he needed to go somewhere. Eric was talking to Nipsey kind of messy. Then the defense attorney asks, you were listening to a conversation about snitching. You said some interesting things. You said there was tension from Nipsey and she said Nipsey didn't really want to talk to Eric. Yes, he was brushing Eric off. Nipsey was wanting Eric to stop talking before he took the pick. Eric asked Nipsey if he was a snitch. And then the defense attorney asked, well, yesterday you said Eric was not messy. But this interview from 2019, you said he was messy. And then um, she said Eric kept asking Nipsey, have you ever snitched? And Nipsey brushed him off. And then uh, the defense attorney played another trans clip. Um, he played a clip from the interview. Now, she was interviewed by the cops for about five hours. And in this clip, they played a part where um, it's, she said, I didn't hear I didn't hear an argument, but Eric was a bit aggressive saying cuz. But yesterday. But then the defense attorney said, but yesterday you said Eric was not aggressive. But in the video from 2019, you said he was getting aggressive. So the defense attorney was really trying to uh, establish a level of aggression that was taking place between Nipsey and Eric Holder. And then um, when you were on the grand jury under oath with immunity, did you know Eric Holder asked about a specific name regarding snitching conversation between Eric Holder and Nipsey Hussle? Apparently, she claimed that a specific name was mentioned during this conversation at the grand jury. Did you say there was a specific name used in that conversation? She said, yes, but I don't know the name. And then the defense attorney um, directed the questioning to the grand jury transcript, page 256, line 7 to 27. How would you describe the conversation back and forth? Did it seem normal or a fight was about to happen? She said Eric Holder was trying to get to the point about something that happened in the past. He said someone snitched, but I caught it in the middle. How many times did Eric Holder ask Nipsey, you snitched before? You said Eric 
you said Eric Holder asked three times. Yes, it could have been more. How many times did you hear Eric Holder say something to Nipsey about snitching? Many times, back to back. Have you ever snitched? Was said. Yes, he asked that multiple times. Being Eric is asking Nipsey, had he ever snitched? And that pretty much wrapped up Bernita Nicholson's testimony, which went from day three to day four. And thanks for tapping in with Street TV. Be sure to subscribe so you can get the next update on the Eric Holder trial. Thanks for staying tapped in to the Street TV channel and this Eric Holder trial update. Make sure you subscribe so you won't miss the next update, which I got dropping first thing tomorrow.